A team of U.S. anti-terror Marines is reportedly heading to Libya to beef up security for diplomats. Let's get some reaction and analysis now from independent news editor James Cobbett. Good to have you with us on RT, James. Now, the killed U.S. ambassador was Washington's envoy to the Libyan rebels during last year's revolution, which Washington backed. Will his death cause a break between two allies or will the U.S. stance remain unchanged, you think? Well, I think that the U.S. is going to have to maintain their relations with the country in order to save face, because what this really has to represent, obviously we can't read too much into this this situation at the moment, because as you say, it's, it's sweeping across North Africa right now. But in the Libyan context specifically, we have to see this as a case of NATO's chickens coming home to roost after they were so uh, complicit in the, in the bombing, the carpet bombing of that country last year. And I think we have to see that at the very least, this type of incident, the storming of the embassy, the killing of a diplomatic official just simply could not, could not have been, happened. It would have been un, un, unthinkable under the uh, Gaddafi government. So in order to maintain a uh, face, I don't think that we're going to see a falling out with the Libyan government and the, uh, the National Transitional Council, which was uh, which which turned into the government in, in elections. I think we're going to see that the U.S. is going to maintain all, all diplomatic relations, but is going to uh, beef up security, which I think is the uh, the predicted result of all of this. Now, Libyan militias have seized huge stockpiles of weapons during the revolution. Some of the guns were reportedly turned on the U.S. consulate last night. Why haven't the militias been disarmed yet? Well, I, the question was who would be able to disarm them. I think that there's a, a false idea that's been floated um, in the American media, certainly, that uh, Libya is, is is a done deal and that was all wrapped up and all of the militias have been disarmed and everyone's been disbanded and gone back home. But people have been actually keeping an eye on Libya since the uh, the American media turned its gaze away from that country, have found that it's, it has continued to, to have uh, tensions and uh, m militias are basically determining what's happening in various parts of the country. The, the fact that there is a government in Tripoli is, is kind of a government in name only in many respects and doesn't necessarily have control over the entire country. And this really just underlines that point and the fact that the, uh, the destabilization that occurred last year was not ultimately uh, aimed at the, the freedom of the Libyan people generally and, and making it a better place, as unfortunately the American public has been told that was all about. It was, uh, it was more of a destabilization and this is uh, really, I think, something that we can expect more of in Libya and in fact ac across North Africa as it starts to flare up right now. Let's talk about this controversial film. Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood has called for nationwide protests against uh, the film. Could the unrest spread across the country and the entire Muslim world? I think it does have that effect, and, and we are starting to get reports now out of out of Tunisia and other places that th these types of protests could be ramping up there as well. So I think this could turn into a, a major international uh, incident, and we'll have to see what type of reaction would even be possible in, in this case when it's not clear, even if the U.S. wanted to retaliate for this type of action against their, their embassies, it's not exactly clear how they would be able to do that or who particularly they would be targeting, unless it was a full-scale invasion of countries which of course is not on the table. So, so it's, a, it's a very politically thorny situation and I think we are likely to see more of that in the, in the next few days as this continues to spread across the region. Thorny it is. Now how will these events affect sectarian tensions in Libya and especially in Egypt where you know, Christians make up around 10% of the population? Well, this is this is the ongoing concern not only in Egypt but uh, but of course in Syria as well, where where again the uh, the the government there is being destabilized at, even as we speak, and the Christian minority is again th uh, threatened with persecution should uh, should the, uh, the 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 Sunnis come to to power in um, or the Shias come to power in Syria. Um, it, it's it's a difficult situation because in in all of these cases uh, there there is this bubbling tension that has been contained for for decades under the rule of someone like Mubarak or. Gaddafi, which isn't to to back up their regimes, their governments, but simply to say that this has been uh, opened up with all of these these Arab Springs, which I think were portrayed unproblematically as a win for the United States and for freedom and for NATO. But I think we're starting to see what this is really turning into. And it's uh, not clear at this point where it's going or, or how it's going to play out, but it's going to uh, have uh, some larger ramifications. And as I say, I think this is going to be a trend that we'll see uh, flaring up across the region in the coming days. Well, obviously, how the president of America is going to react to this is another thing. Uh, you know, they're going to the polls. Americans are going to the polls in November. How do you think the voters are going to take this on? Do you think the presidential vote uh, will have, 
you know, these events will have some kind of bearing in who wins and who will be commander in chief of America in the next couple of months? Uh, in terms of the events that have played out already today, I don't think it's going to have a, a deciding effect one way or the other. It d really depends what comes in the in the next few days and, and weeks if this continues to to play out. Uh, we've already seen Romney try to score some points against Obama for not condemning this strongly enough. But again, I think most people see that for political rhetoric. So I don't think that's going to be changing many people's minds and probably will not have much of a, a sway on the on the outcome of the election. But again, it depends on how this plays out and what, what continues to happen from this point. What do you think is going to be the reaction from Washington? I think at this point, there's not much that they can do. As I say, uh, I don't think that there's any way that they can specifically retaliate against, against the people involved here. I think it's going to have to take place at, at a more diplomatic level, and uh, they're going to obviously send more security to their embassies in the region, but uh, it's not really clear exactly what they can do other than work with the security forces in Cairo, in Tripoli, um, and in other places across the region. And uh, at this point, I'm not sure there's much more they can do uh, other than, than simply beef up security. James Corbett, live from Japan. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Always good to hear from you. That was James Corbett, uh, independent news editor, speaking to us here on RT.